junior from Brookfield, Wisconsin, number 34, Chris Center. And at forward for the Hawkeyes, a 6'8 sophomore from San Jose, California, number 42, Jay Webb. for the Wolverines, a 6'11 sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio, number 42, Eric Riley. And for the Hawkeyes at center, a 6'10 sophomore from Moline, Illinois, number 55, A.T. Earl. And the guards for Michigan. A 6'1 senior from Flint, Michigan, number 13, Demetrius Caleb. At one guard for Iowa, a 6'2 junior from Carson, California, number 24, James Moses. The other guard for the Wolverines, a 6'1 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 14, Michael Tolley. And for the Hawkeyes at guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Wichita, Kansas, number 20, Val Barr. The head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, Steve Fisher, he piloted them to a national championship as an interim coach two years ago. I was Tom Davis in his fifth year and already the fourth winningest coach in school history. The officials tonight, Dan Christman, Tom Rucker, and Tim Higgins, ready to call tonight's game between Iowa and Michigan. Well, Larry, right now it's time for Iowa to be a contender or pretender. And the situation, you've got to protect your home court. Iowa looking for their second victory at home. Hawks did it on Saturday night, beat Michigan State 79-66. Tom Davis said it was the biggest win of the season thus far. And when you take a look at the Big Ten standings, you see Iowa very much in the hunt. Right up there, just that one loss, and of course on the road at Ohio State. And that team, of course, the Buckeyes right at the top, and Indiana and Ohio State among the top five in the country. You're not used to seeing Michigan at 0-2. They've not been 0-3 in the league since 1981. They really feel this is a big one for them. Well, and a surprise starter of sorts, Chris Setter starting for Sam Mitchell. Setter, when he was a senior in high school, Iowa also showed interest in him, recruited him, but he chose going to Michigan. He started against the Buckeyes Saturday. He starts again tonight. A.C. Earl to do battle with a highly touted sophomore big man and Eric Riley, and that battle in the middle should be a good one. Yeah, right now, fans ought to be ready to watch that. Two best shot blockers, both very good athletes. And this time the tap is won by Riley as he has most of the games this year for the Wolverines. And it's man-to-man -man defense for the Hawkeyes. And Moses, who stole the ball five times against Michigan State, comes up with a swipe with the help of AC, but the Wolverines take it right back, and this is Tally. A setter gets past Webb. And fighting for the rebound, A.C. Earl. Michigan, not the Michigan of old when you talk physical talent on the inside as Riley gets that steal and basket, but you can see his athletic ability, 6'11", driving it to the hole. A ragged start, a swap of turnovers, the Wolverines on the board first. Michigan, basically a man-to-man -man team, aren't they, Mac? As we're coming up with the steal, Kirk Taylor on the drive against Rodell Davis. No basket, a travel that's called. You can credit Rodell Davis with a defense sticking right to him that forced the walk. Well, that's one reason you never want to give up or quit on a chase situation. Right there, as Taylor had the opportunity, he went ahead, saw Rodell coming, and just took a step in between, getting that dribble down. And I'll tell you, an unusual matchup from the sense that A.C. Earl is being guarded by Chris Setter. And you've got the 6'11", Eric Riley, on Jay Webb. And only a minute into the game, Tom Davis has already made the guard change with Kevin Smith and Troy Skinner coming in, and Val Barnes and James Moses checking out. That is Smith, who provides some instant inspiration to this basketball team when he comes in. And the Hawkeyes having trouble hanging onto the ball in the early going. They haven't even gotten a shot up to the rim yet. 90 seconds have been played. Wolverines on top, 2 to nothing. Talek 
goes in a crowd, and taking it away from center is Troy Skinner. Smith kicks off for Rodell Davis. And Riley has the rebound. He is second in the conference in rebounding, averaging 8.7 rebounds a game. Very good play by the Hawkeyes. No block out. They've had unforced turnovers trying to get their running game going. Riley looks at Earl, decides not to challenge him. Tally nails the three. That was caused that time. Kevin Smith doubled down on the center. Riley, Riley, a good kick out. Tally wide open. Smith not able to get back to him to bother him defensively. A.C. Earl pumps, fires, and plucking off the rebound, Demetrius Kaler. He likes to shoot from there, and that's why. Seven to nothing, Wolf Reigns and Tom Davis will have to use a quick timeout. The ball game not even three minutes old, and it's all Michigan thus far. Michigan has jumped to a seven to nothing lead, and we'll be right back at Carver Hawkeye Arena. And Troy Skinner now trying to make something happen for the Hawks. James Winters also in at the dead ball. Here's Skinner for a three, and the Hawks are still scoreless and not rebounding well early against a team that is last in the conference in rebound margin. That's because with the exception of Riley and Cedar or Mitchell, they're not very big. And the Hawkeyes now go to zone. See if that'll give Michigan some problems. Of course, Iowa's zone has been very effective this year. And Caleb has been very effective thus far. Adding a three to his earlier two-point goal, it is 10 to nothing, Michigan. The Hawkeyes off to their worst start on the home court this year. Moses for Skinner. Winners in a crowd, he walks with it, and the Hawkeyes continue to struggle at the beginning. Now A.C. Earl will come back in for Iowa. Winners starts to do a drop step, and this shuffled both his feet. And now the Hawkeye fans getting a little restless, and of course, a snowy night. Some of the fans arriving a little late. The seats are virtually filled now, but it did take a while to get them filled. 10 to nothing, Michigan, and they inbound. James Foskell has just checked in. He wears number 32. This just his third game coming off foot surgery. Caleb's two for two, and finally misses. And A.C. Earl claims rebound number two. Hawks try to get off the Schneid. The first four minutes have been almost played, and the Iowa Hawkeyes still without a score. And another takeaway. Caleb comes up with it. This is Tally. And it is 12 to nothing, Wolverines. And already the starting guards have 10 of the Wolverines' 12 points. They certainly would expect the perimeter game out of Michigan. That's where they get almost 70% of their points as Earl tries to get Iowa's their first points. Iowa's just going to have to turn it up a notch. He is fouled by Riley. Good post up inside by Earl, and he had to challenge three Wolverines to try and get that. Riley. As we've said, the second leading shot blocker in the Big Ten going after that one. But Michigan is not a big team. They're not a physical team inside. I was really going to have to take advantage of that. And the Hawkeyes are on the board at the 15-41 mark. But what makes it difficult sometimes, even though you have the inside advantage, is they do have quickness on the perimeter. So when they have the quickness on the perimeter, they take away easy passing lanes. They react better than a slower team. And a Wolverine, I believe Riley, stepping into the lane a little prematurely, and so another opportunity for A.C. Earl. A.C., sixth in the conference in scoring, hitting 17.6 a game. Leads, of course, in block shots with 50. Also number six in field goal percentage at 58%. And it is a 10-2 Michigan lead as A.C. Earl converts the free throw. Against the press, Michigan will attack. They want to go right to the basket. And deep is Taylor. And the ball belongs to the Hawkeyes. Iowa still without a basket. And Steve Fisher and Tom Davis certainly viewing this beginning with varying emotions. For Davis, a nightmarish beginning. For Steve Fisher, great start on the road for a team that has struggled losing their first two conference games. 
Hey, look there, steals four for Michigan, just one for Iowa. Barnes trying to get his own rebound, knocked it away and out of bounds, and it's Michigan ball. Chris Center, who started, is now back in for the Wolverines. You know, it was two great games the Hawkeyes played last week. Tom Davis sensing that today, talked to his team about being mentally ready. That Michigan will always have great athletes, and they always have good players. They just don't have the record as they have in the past. Nice hesitation dribble by Caleb, but a rejection by Earl, the 51st of the season for AC. Now AC at the other end, first basket. Almost five minutes into the game, Iowa scores their first two. It's 12 to four, Michigan. Davis tries to finish what he started and does. A steal and a hoop for Rodell, and it's 12 to six. And another steal. And Barnes draws the foul. Val Barnes in traffic, got a couple of defenders into the air. And being whistled for the personal foul. Is Sam Mitchell, and it will be his first. Michigan now with two. The Hawks without a foul. And Val Barnes, who is 10 of 12 the other night against Michigan State, scoring 17 points, 10 of 12 from the line, will go to the strike. I'll tell you, A.C. Earl, again, starting out well tonight in that block shot area, going up. This is just a volleyball spike right there. That puts him on the Olympic team. Big time rejection. Yeah. AC 50 block shots all of last year has already surpassed that, getting his 51st tonight. Barnes, the only Hawkeye to have started every game so far this year. 12 to 7 as Barnes goes 1 to 2, and Troy Skinner comes in replacing Val Barnes to set up the Iowa Press. Michigan will try and get the ball to the point guard. You'll see him at the top of the key, Demetrius Caleb. And there they go to Caleb. Tally stays behind the three-point barrier, and the rebound is taken by A.C. Earl. He's got four early ones. Skinner looking for it, could not find it. A flurry of early Hawkeye turnovers. They trail 12 to seven and into the lineup for Michigan, another outstanding perimeter shooter and Rob Pelinka. Now he's not outstanding this year, hitting 33%. But Coach Steve Fisher says he has the ability to be an outstanding outside shooter. And both teams have five turnovers and really just five and a half minutes into the game. If that kept up, it'd be 40 turnovers for each team. Pelinka for three and Moses has his first rebound. The trailing 10 to nothing. Iowa can pull back to within three but don't get the opportunity. That's a very tough pass to throw the ball down the center of the court when you're already at the center of the court. The receiver has a very difficult chance to catch and then to be able to convert it. It's over his shoulder, it's too tough. As far as Michigan living up to their advanced billing, they are really working the perimeter. One of the reasons I suppose that rebounding margin is off and they're last in the conference in that category. Palenka behind the three-point line by a considerable distance nails his first. And it's 15 to seven, Michigan. Earl now against Mitchell. Riley guarding Jay Webb. And Caleb is pushed out of bounds by Webb. It is the first foul called on the Hawks. They look right there. Michigan Wolverines last in the Big Ten in margin. And of course, that is a function of the smallness of the lineup and their big people are just not physical people. Meanwhile, Iowa, as per usual under Tom Davis, out-rebounding opponents this year by about four a game. Another three-point try is in by Michigan. This time it is Kurt Kaler, and everybody hitting from long range for Michigan. They lead 18 to seven. Barnes has a block by Mitchell. Now by Riley. They have been tough inside. Val going in there just 6-1, have trouble getting the shot off. And fighting for the rebound, James Winters. He had to work hard to keep that one alive. 
Inside, Winters, nice pass from Skinner, and he is fouled. Push-off spotted against the Wolverines. Good inside ball movement that time from Skinner. As you reverse, the step in, Winters wide open. Good head fake, got the man in the air. The help side, not in good position, getting the foul. Iowa just two baskets in the first seven minutes of play, trailing 18 to seven as Taylor with his first foul will now go to the Wolverine bench. Winners a 52% foul shot shooter. Tom Davis' Hawkeyes three of five from the stripe in the early going. Hawks back to within 10 at 18 to eight. Street almost knocked the ball away from behind. And a bounce off to Lincoln. The ball goes to the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes still staying in the zone. They're trying to match up on that perimeter with their three men outside, leaving the two big people down on the blocks. But Michigan passes the ball very well, able to find the open men. I will looking for the third basket of the game is Val Barnes. Has difficulty with it, and it was knocked off of him and out of bounds. When we talk about not letting a game come to you, that's what's happening right now with Iowa. They're trying to force it a little bit, try to go into double teams, and not finding daylight on their passes or on their dribble penetration. They see Kevin Smith replace Val Barnes. Sometimes Smith has the ability to just jumpstart a Hawkeye team that can be sluggish at the time. He's got that inspirational quality. It's called quickness. <laughs> Both ends of the floor, he makes his presence felt. The traveling violation against James Boskill, and the ball goes back to Iowa. Even though there are not a lot of points up there by Iowa, the pace has been quick, and Michigan has had to play some players already, but maybe they normally wouldn't get the same number of minutes as they would in other games. The clear out for Kevin Smith. Chris Street with an offensive rebound. And Rodell Davis has his second hoop. And Chris Street remains to improve. Tell you, he's good on the ball there. That was a nice look pass. Help Rodell Davis score. Hawks back with an eight as Skinner pressures Tally. Riley challenging Winters, and Winters went right up there with him, showing some outstanding leaping ability, but also made contact and drew the personal foul. Now that's why his name was Skywalker in high school. You see Winters really elevate himself up there with a 6'11 man. It's a lot of ball. Riley able to hang on to the rim. And of course, that's a rule change this year. If there's a problem or a situation develops where he could be injured or another player, you're allowed to hang on the rim. At the line, Eric Riley, a sophomore from Cleveland, St. Joseph High School. Went to the same high school as a couple of the Wolverine football stars, Elvis Gerbach and Desmond Howard. Not to mention a guy named Treg Lee at Ohio State. And probably their most famous athlete, Clark Kellogg. Riley with three. The Wolverines lead is nine at 19 to 10. 11.55 left to play in the first half. And a timeout is taken. So the Hawkeyes try to fight back after falling behind early 10 to nothing. We'll be back at the... Go to the left. The two other big people go to the right. The coaches know where everybody is. They can go talk to them. And everybody has an assigned seat during the timeout. Iowa with their 11th turnover. You just saw the statistic, and the Hawkeyes quickly added to it. And the walk against Voskill. And Bosco playing just his third ball game this year. November 30th, he had foot surgery, and so he's just now coming back. Steve Fisher, the only man to lead a team to a national championship as an interim coach, now making a change, and Kirk Taylor, a starter averaging 12.8, comes back in for the Wolverines. See, that's a good travel call made by the officials. This year, there's been more emphasis on making sure the player gets the ball down before he shuffles or moves both feet. Hawkeyes struggling early at this point have one more turnover than points as they trail 19 to 10. Rodell Davis has it blocked from behind by Rich McIver. Rich McIver, a freshman, very athletic big man from Texas. He is raw when you really talk basketball skills and being able to be an offensive player, but he can run and jump and will be an excellent player for the Wolverines. Iowa's pressure forces a Michigan turnover. The ball back to the Hawkeyes who trail 19 to 10. Well, if Iowa could really settle down and score at the offensive end, they would be back in this game. 
Wolverines have turned it over against the pressure a number of times. Greg Tubbs now into the Iowa lineup to inbound. Greg averaging 3.3. Greg had eight stitches over his left eye. Got those taken out. Now tries for a field goal and scores. Tubbs off the bench and quickly into the scoring column. And Iowa's back to within seven at 19 to 12. And a chance at more. Jump ball, but the Hawkeyes will keep it. Tubbs right there, 6'9", going down on the floor, making sure they get the jump ball situation. You don't want to reach for it and have somebody else come and swipe it away. Make sure you have control of it. At least get the jump opportunity. Hawkeyes looking for somebody to come in and provide some spark. Greg Tubbs scoring as soon as he got his hands on the ball. We'll try to continue that effort. Here's A.C. Earl double teamed and with the rebound, Kirk Taylor. Taylor only 6'4", but the second leading rebounder for Michigan at almost six a game. Hawkeyes have had just about zero outside shooting and scoring. It's all been inside or free throw line. Skinner almost had the steal. And now Moses tries to climb over Riley. For Moses, it is his first foul for the Hawkeyes, their third. Hawkeyes in good rebounding position on the inside. The ball takes a long bounce back to the Michigan offensive player Riley and then Moses getting the foul. You would not expect to see a 6'11 center hit 80% of his free throws, but Riley has been. Although tonight he's just one out of three. So Eric Riley now with four, and Michigan builds the lead eight at 20 to 12, 10 29 to go in the first half. Smith takes tally inside. Boy, again, right. Earl, triple team this time. Bump, nothing called. Brig Tubbs was wide open, just could not get him the ball. AC could not see him. Michigan and Riley and Tubbs battle for the rebound. Michigan doing a great job of doubling down or triple teaming every time the ball goes to the low post to A.C. Earl. He is having company. Outside shot, perimeter once again. And a long rebound. Tubbs blocking off. And Riley with his second foul as Earl goes inside against McIver, and he is fouled. McIver on the reach-in, and it will be his first foul, but thinking of Riley's foul problems, Mac, his confidence has been lagging lately because he's been getting in foul problems. Yeah, Coach Fisher indicated to us today that all of a sudden Riley is able to go out and have one or two quick fouls, and it bothers him. He becomes tentative, and when he becomes tentative, then he doesn't play a good offensive game, and it just multiplies. It's uh, kind of like the putter in the golf bag. All of a sudden, the putter goes bad, your driving goes bad because you try to make up for it, or you try to make a great pitch shot. Um, it's a tough situation. Confidence is very difficult to regain once you lose it. Steve Fisher, his third year on the Michigan bench, going back to the interim season that he finished out, the NCAA tournament. Here's Setter, who started tonight, back into the lineup, replacing McIver. Okay, Coach Fisher doing a good job of rotating big people in there. And of course, he has put the shortest, but maybe the, the wider body, on A.C. Earl. And Riley has taken the power forward for Iowa. Saturday night, Michigan State sagged on AC Earl. The perimeter players then hurt Michigan State. Now tonight, Michigan's getting away with it so far, Matt. Why is that? I'll tell you, what they're really doing is doubling down so much, AC's having trouble finding other people. And they just left the athletic shot blocker away from the ball, which is where a shot blocker likes to be. They like to see the whole play develop. Behind the three-point line is Kayla. Good save by Chris Street, who's really hustling for the defensive rebound. Moses looking for his first bucket. And again, Kirk Taylor, not very big, goes high to pull down a rebound. Chris Street battling Caleb. Michigan keeps it. Chris didn't think so. Right there, Chris Street, as he came down court, really didn't see that loose ball. He was coming back to defensive position by the time he reacted to it. Scrambled for the ball. Looked like it may have gone off a Michigan player. And certainly Chris Street and Tom Davis think so. Tom Davis looking for an explanation. He says if nothing else, there had to be a foul. 
Wolverines lead it by seven. And again, they look around the perimeter for most of their offense. They've done it all night long. For three, it's Tally. That is his second three-pointer of the game, is a point of the game, and the Wolverines have equaled their biggest lead at 23-13. 8.53 to go in the first half. And the Hawkeyes, one of their last six shots. And again, nothing from the outside. Moses on the drive, offensive foul. Moses on the charge, his second, team's fourth. And Larry, we talked about this at the top of the show, was the maturity of James Moses, where he has generally stopped and taken the shot right there. Not take it a step further, get into problems, got the charge call, and of course the shot, not a good one. Freshman center to inbound. And despite Tally's effort to save, Davis comes up with it, and Rodell has got six first half points. He's Iowa's leading scorer, Hawks back to the eight. Great steal by Val Barnes. What a step in steal. Anticipation. And Chris Street on the ball continues to bother the inbounds pass. Tally beats Earl. And AC tried to lay off of him, but did make contact and picks up the personal foul. Okay. This is a smart basketball play by Mike Tally. He looks like he's going to go straight to the basket. And then what he does, he gives a little hesitation, stops, and almost moves backwards into AC Earl while throwing that ball up off the glass, getting AC to foul. And so Tally, a 79% free throw shooter, goes to the line as James Winters replaces AC Earl in the Hawkeye lineup. Tally's at three out of four shots from the field thus far, and he nails his first from the free throw line to get him nine points. He leads Michigan scoring in this game. On the season, averaging only 10.7, so he is almost there. 25-17, Wolverines, 8.23 to go first half. Winners guarded by Setter. Trying for the takeaway, Caleb, he commits the foul. Demetrius Caleb with his first. The Wolverines had their sixth. I was trailed by 10 twice in this game. Now they're down by eight, but they've got the ball and a chance to cut the Wolverine lead. Barnes off the baseline. And an impressive rebound by McIver. He just spread out and almost filled that whole lane, Mac. Well, he's going to be just a very good player. Got long arms, very good athlete, and he's doing a tremendous job just as a role player, rebounder, and defender on the inside. Michigan with an eight-point lead, 740 before halftime. They've led all the way. McIver, not an offensive threat. If you're watching, he just goes from block to block. And Michigan was put up the perimeter shot. And James Winters again pulling down a rebound. His second. Rodell Davis on the long pass. Davis with eight. The Hawkeyes back to within six at 25 to 19. Here is Taylor. And Val Barnes comes down with a rebound. Iowa now starting to do a better job on the boards after really struggling early. Barnes for three. And that's Iowa's first outside shot tonight. Val Barnes getting it going. And now there's more tempo to the game for Iowa rather than just speed. They're winners. playing in a rhythm. Winners coming up with a steal. Here's Barnes. And the Hawkeyes, after trailing by 10 a moment ago, are back to within one. And now the crowd is into it. And Michigan is going to have to figure a way to quiet the crowd. Iowa with seven unanswered points. The run ended by Demetrius Caleb. Rodell Davis off the pass from Skinner. And he is still red hot. We talked about Rodell Davis could have a good game because he has got power and strength on the block. Michigan does not have three good defenders that can go low. The Hawks looking for some scoring from that position. Exactly six to play in the first half. 
This is similar to the, the Michigan-Iowa State game, where Michigan started out well. Iowa State came back, ended up winning that game. Caleb leaves the three short. Skinner scraps for the rebound, and a push-off is spotted. Setter that time on the push, clearing Skinner out of the way. It's Setter's first, it's the Wolverine seventh. Well, you look at the bench right now, uh, the official score, it looks like a convention of players. Each team sending in three, four substitutes. Bruce Pearl making notes on his chart as the Hawkeyes now will have Barnes, Tubbs, Earl, Smith, and Davis. The Wolverines will have Caleb Mitchell, who hasn't played a whole lot thus far. Voskel is also in. Number 42 is Riley, and Rob Polinka. Number three will be the other guard. Davis with a 10-point first half. His season high, 15 against Chaminade. Yeah. Rodell Davis has 11, and as you speculated, Mac, Rodell having an outstanding game. Now you really look at the Michigan defenders. They have three perimeter players offensively and defensively. So when Rodell posts up, it really gives him a strength advantage and a more better comfort zone. Hawks would have had their first lead, and Davis converted. And Michigan's got the ball with a game tied at 27. But prior to the Wolverine, inbounding, we have a timeout. Timeout, 5.43 before station provided by... Turned it around. Well, you could say Val Barnes has been barnstorming. <laughs> and right here, the pressure, and that's been the key during this last three-minute period. Offensive foul on the Hawks. And if you're looking at a key position or a key player, I'd have to say it's been the man on the ball. Whether it's been Street or Tubbs, they have really bothered the inbounds pass, allowing the Iowa perimeter defenders to get the steals. Davis now in for Moses. Moses with his third foul. So he becomes the first Hawkeye in difficulty. We mentioned he's been on a roll in double figures in his last five ball games, season highs in his last three. So he represents a key cog in the Hawkeye offense who will now have to spend some time on the bench. Wolverines trying to unknot the score, which is even at 27. This is Riley. Riley is listed at 6'11", but Mac, virtually everybody calls him a 7-footer. He measured that in high school. Either he shrunk an inch or Michigan doesn't believe in calling anybody a 7-footer. Well, it's kind of like A.C. Earl. A.C. Earl is the tallest 6'10 person I've ever been around. So I guess, you know, you like to be 6'10", 6'11". When you're a 7-footer, big things are expected of you. <laughs> I guess that's what most coaches think. A little less pressure if they list you at 6'11 sure. rather than 7 foot. Just another one of those guys, 6 foot something. Hawks can tie with the 2, take the lead with the 3. Palenka just hand checked Barnes and nothing called. And the Wolverines get the basketball. Not the way Tom Davis saw it though. He saw the hand check the match telling you about. It. This is Caleb. Wolverines are two point late, trying to make it more as Mitchell. Bosco has the rebound. The Wolverines go up by four as James Bosco scores just his second basket of the season. Wolverines 0 and 2 in the Big Ten, but playing with poise against the Hawkeyes early. Is Brig Tubbs. Davis has had the hot hand. He's five out of seven. Mitchell with a rebound. Steve Fisher told us his team struggling from the floor, Mac. They've lost three of four and shot less than 40% at all three. Tonight, though, they're taking much better shots than they must have in those other games. And they got off to a great start. And, of course, a team that struggles a little bit, you talk about how do you build confidence, you have some success. And now, all of a sudden, Michigan had that with that great start. Skinner over Polinka. And the Hawkeyes just not getting the roll from outside. And a timeout is taken. We have three minutes and 18 seconds to go before halftime. The Hawks have been tied with the Wolverines, but they have never led in this game. We'll be back after these words from your local. That's really been the battle lines on which this game has been written. 
Well, the coaching staff right there talking about it, and you look, Michigan already shot 11 threes. They only averaged 13 a game. James Bartles now comes into the lineup. He has not played the last several ball games, but the freshman from Freedom, Wisconsin, which is close to the Green Bay area, now getting some playing time. And Hawkeyes go back to their man-to-man -man defense. That's how they started out, trying to get more pressure on the shooter. Leave A.C. Earl inside to take away any penetration. Caleb kicks it back outside to Bosco. And he nails it from the baseline. It's our six-point lead for the Wolverines at 33 to 27. And this is probably as large a lineup as Michigan can really put out there with Bosco and Mitchell Riley. And they basically go with just a two-guard in Palenka and Caleb. Now, Tom Davis is probably going to try to set something up off this inbounds. It's the lob for AC. And he didn't get the basket, but he did get fouled. Three Wolverines were around AC as he tried to put that shot up. And getting him was Mitchell, his second. Good entry pass on that inbounds underneath Iowa's own basket. Earl, three out of four from the foul line. Not only does he lead the team in blocks, but also leads the conference. And just to show you how dominating he has been, Eric Riley of Michigan is second. He has 35 blocks. AC now has 52 with his two tonight. The rebound cleared by Sam Mitchell. And free throw shooting like that won't help the Hawkeyes, who are in 10th place in the Big Ten. Free throw shooting. 6 of 11 tonight from the line. And the turnover will give the ball back to Iowa. Hawks trying to make something happen. 2-14 left in the first half. They trail 33-27. Shot clock showed 34 seconds. Michigan still in their backcourt. Good pressure by the Hawkeyes. And again, Chris Street getting a hand on the ball, deflecting it. Barnes off the baseline. And the rebound long to Mitchell, who can't hang on. And Iowa gets it back. A couple of changes for the Wolverines. Taylor, number 23, comes in. Number 44 is McIver, their talented freshman from Freeport, Texas. Bosco leaves and Riley leaves. I really believe Chris Street taking the ball out of bounds is an advantage for the Hawkeyes. He was a quarterback in high school, has very good vision, finds the open man. That he was quite a quarterback at 34 touchdown passes. Polenka fouls Skinner. And you know you're just training yourself to see the width of the court or the depth of it, just like you would as a football quarterback. And the players, or the crowd, are asking for three free throws for Skinner. They're saying he was outside the circle, and I believe that's what he's gonna get. So referee Dan Christman checking with the officials. Skinner, who is the top free throw shooter in the Big Ten Conference. Let's see if he was behind that three-point line. Well, the pump fake, the shot goes up. No question that his feet are outside the circle. No doubt about it. So Skinner to the line for three. He is 42 of 47 at the foul line this year, topping the Big Ten at 89%. I believe Skinner's like 14th in the country. Free throw shooting. That cuts the Michigan lead to five to four. This is like practice. You just stay at the line. Shoot till you make and then shoot till you miss. Oh, can't complete the third. McIver has the rebound. Waiting moments of the first half. The Wolverines try to add to a four-point lead. Behind the three-point line, Caleb. A three-point basket for the defensive mix up there. Caleb wide open. You know he's going to look to shoot. Very good offensive player. His second three of the game. Barnes 
tries to fake before dribbling, but he walks with it. The turnover gives it back to the Wolverines. Al Barnes, one of the best players in the Big Ten, using the glass, will take it inside. And using the glass is a great advantage, Larry, because you can get it up over the big people. You're just looking to shoot at a spot up on the backboard. 36-29, Michigan with the lead and the ball. A minute and a half to go in the first half. Wolverines have lost six in a row on the road, dating back to last year. Hawks have won ten in a row at home, dating back to last year. But Michigan has played an outstanding first half. Caleb, his second three in a row, and Caleb with 13 first-half points. He's leading the team, averaging 19 a game, and he's had a red-hot first half. Here is Davis getting fouled. On the foul is Taylor. Kirk Taylor with his second. And Rodell Davis, who has struggled at the stripe, will now have an opportunity to turn that around with Michigan suddenly back into a 10-point lead on the two long bombs by Demetrius Caleb. And Rodell will get two free throws. Michigan in double digits with fouls. They have 10 in this first half. Davis pacing Hawkeye scoring in the first half with 11. Davis a 64% free field goal, field goal shooter, but from the line quite a different story where he is only 9 of 20 coming into the game. Hawks back to an 8 as Davis gets the roll. Odell 3 of 4 from the line in this one. A.C. Earl comes in. James Winters goes out. Hawkeyes really are going to have to improve their half-court defense. They have allowed Michigan to find some shooting areas. It's the pressure that's bothered them. Once again here, when Iowa can score, they're able to catch up with Michigan. Iowa a chance to cut further into Wolverine lead, which is now at eight. Into the final minute of the first half, we're down to 48 seconds. The shot clock's at 30, so there's an 18-second differential between the two. Davis! Taylor just not strong enough to stay with Rodell at all. Once again, pressure for the Hawkeyes. A dump and a dish. And Rodell Davis with 17 in the first half. A season high for him already. And again, Iowa pressure. Chris Street on the ball, bothering the freshman, Sam Mitchell. Tom Mitchell with a look of desperation on his face. Taylor finding Mitchell, but Mitchell travels as he comes through the lane. The ball goes back to the Hawkeyes. A moment ago, the 102 mark, Iowa down by 10, and now a chance to cut a four-point Michigan lead. Uh, you were going to say the same thing I was thinking. It's just an up-and-down game of about six to ten points spurts by each team. When Iowa can score and set up their pressure, they have the spurt. When Michigan breaks the Iowa pressure, they're having open jump shots on the perimeter, and they're a very good perimeter shooting team. I like the way Steve Fisher commented on the pressure today at the shoot-around. He said, it's pay me now or pay me later. Sooner or later, that pressure will get to you. Davis again. Rebound cleared by McIver, and a foul is called on Rodell Davis. Ah, right there, the coaching staff. And Rodell all know six seconds left, and that is the seventh team foul on Iowa. So they're giving up literally a one and one to Michigan with just 6.2 seconds left in the first half. But Tom Davis has seen his team come from a 10 point deficit, the 102 mark, to now a four point deficit. But Michigan has a chance to stretch it out at the line. In the person of Chris Setter, he is nine of 13 from the line thus far in the season. Bartles back in. And, and Davis goes out. The reason for that, Bartles, 6'6, six, six, a good perimeter shooter. Iowa would look to expect to get Barnes and Bartles on the wings. Smith penetrating. Street going high for the rebound. No basket. Because McIver climbed the back of Street. He fouled before he tipped it in. McIver with his second foul. Chris Street, number 40, bottom of your screen. He has to step out and block out. He just stepped in. The foul does take place, but you've got to take care of your position on the free throw line. Chris Street has to step back into the man, make sure he does not have his legs so he can jump. Actually, he climbed the back of both Street and Earl. They were both there forming the wall, and it's Earl who will go to the line. 
Well, you look here, Larry, when Iowa has shot more than 20 free throws a game, they're 12 and 0. If they've shot 20 or less, 0 and 2. Our guys are on pace for 20. This will be their 14th attempt. But certainly have not made a great percentage. They've had the opportunities. AC has missed three in a row. Six seconds remain in the first half. Hawks back to within three. Winters replaces Earl. Iowa does not have their shot blocker in there at the back. Winters is going to have to be the protector. Is she going to have trouble even getting it across the midcourt line? Caleb has time, but it counted had it gone. But it does not, and so the Hawkeyes will go to the locker room down by only three after a minute ago, trailing by ten. The halftime score, the Michigan Wolverines 39, the Iowa Hawkeyes 36. Mack and I return to Carver Hawkeye Arena in just a moment. Those two, zero points, first half. And of course, Moses has been red hot. He has scored double figures each of the last five, so he needs to get off to a good start in this half. For Michigan, again, it's Tally and Caleb who have led the way. Caleb with 13 points and Tally with 10. And that is Caleb handling the ball. Inside it goes to Riley. A.C. Earl with his third block. And the Hawkeyes have a chance to score first in the second half. A oh, nice pass. What a pass, and A.C. finishes it off. And the Hawkeyes are back to within one of the Wolverines. Great job by A.C. Earl being able to get the block shot and beat everybody else down court for the layup. The perimeter is something they've done all night and with great success. They're outstanding outside shooting. The reason they led throughout the first half. And you watch Iowa in the man-to-man. -man. They seem to be more aware. They're coming out, playing just off the ball four or five feet. Daring Michigan to go inside and score with the big people. Underneath, A.C. Earl got a hand on the ball, and so Michigan will reset it, but A.C. Earl, outstanding defense. Earl, outstanding defense. Here are the block shot, and then a big man, 6'10", will head down the other direction and finishes off a layup. Tremendous job by A.C. Earl. Two Hawkeyes. And now the officials conferring with A.C. Earl getting in the picture as well. AC says you need four officials. Let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> Facing you, Dan Christman. And now with his back to you is a gentleman from New Jersey, Tim Higgins. They're trying to decide whether they're going to reset the shot clock. Well, that's a new rule in college basketball this year. Blocked out of bounds with more than five seconds to go on the shot clock. You do not reset it. An award to the defense for blocking the shot. And they're trying to determine whether the shot got off or did AC actually block it? Or did he hit it after it hit the basket area? And they're saying the shot is going to count as a taken shot. Therefore, the shot clock gets reset to 45 seconds. And so that's settled. Setter will inbound for Michigan. And the block shots, as we expected, would be a high figure in this ballgame because you have the two top shot blockers in the Big Ten in Earl and Riley. Caleb nails another three. That is his fourth three-pointer of this game. 42-38, Michigan with the lead. Iowa three times in this game has trailed by 10, have always fought back, but never to take the lead. Moses underneath. When there's pressure, the area that will be open is what is called the back door, or going back to the basket. Moses found the little alley. Very good pass. Moses with his first bucket of the game. Two minutes have been played in the half. Michigan with a two-point lead at 42 to 40. Good entry pass to Riley, and he hits the turnaround. Eric Riley having an outstanding season. Second in the conference in rebounds. Third on the team in scoring at 11.8. Well, look, at Steve, yeah, look at Steve Fisher there. And you know, uh, Larry, some people didn't know how well Steve Fisher could recruit. 
but already this year he has gone out and probably got the premier power forward in the country, Javon Howard, out of Chicago. And he is in contention for the best player in Michigan and maybe one of the top five in the country, Chris Weber. Michigan able to get the ball, bring the ball down the floor with a four-point lead, 17.40 to go in the game. The Wolverines have not trailed. Hawkeyes making an unusually high amount of turnovers. Michigan deserves a lot of the credit for that. Here is Tally. Jay Webb pulls down the rebound, and Iowa can try to cut a four-point Michigan lead. Barnes for three. Nothing but net. I'll tell you, that's when you feel it. You just know that's what you want to do. He turned, looked only at the basket, felt it being his range, and knocked it right down for the Hawkeyes. Street in for Webb. Webb really has to get himself more active defensively and on the glass. Taylor ahead to Tally. And he does a good job getting inside A.C. Earl. Not much that A.C. could do that time. That was a good challenge by Tally right there. Took it right at him, only six foot. Even showed him the ball with the right hand. Not intimidated by A.C. Good takeaway by Setter. Adele Davis turned around. Setter was right in his face. And he made a good play. In deep it is Taylor. Basketball count, and he is fouled. Once again, the Hawkeyes make a run to get the lead, and the Wolverines respond with a couple quick baskets. Tally last time with a basket, this time the assist. Taylor able to catch and streak, reaching from behind. First foul on Street. Yeah, got him at the body. Taylor, the most pleasant surprise this year for Michigan, not only the fact he's playing so well, but that he's playing at all after sitting out all last year with torn knee ligaments. A lot of people thought he might not make it back. Hawks down by five as Kevin Smith fires a three. Moses, offensive rebound. And j on the spin connects for the Hawks. And right there is a simple thing for young players to look at. A pivot move gets him totally free for an easy basket. Tally gets an offensive rebound off the Caleb miss, but the steal by Smith. And nobody's going to catch him. Iowa back to within one, 48-47, 16 minutes to go. You're right, nobody will catch Kevin Smith. A.C. Earl challenges. He wants the block. Tally instead gets the hoop. Good dish off to get Tally the two. And the Wolverines go up by three at 50 to 47. And Smith answers for Iowa. That has really become a trademark for Kevin Smith. Going right to the basket. Stop and pop. Over the outstretched arms. Five foot shot. A.C. Earl with a strong rebound. The Hawks try to take their first lead of the game. Yes! Moses silent in the first half. Three baskets early in the second half. Iowa with their first lead at 51 to 50. And see if Michigan goes to Caleb, the veteran, to see if he can settle down, try and get a shot maybe that he wants. The crowd has come alive. They're on their feet. James Moses brought them there by giving Iowa their first lead of the game. This becomes a potential turnaround stretch in this when you get the feeling. A.C. Earl knocking it down. The Hawkeyes come up with it. Earl with five blocks in this ballgame. Street in the lane, and he draws a foul. Riley with a personal foul, his third. And when Eric Riley is in foul problems, he doesn't play very well. Steve Fisher, his coach, says. Been a problem for the freshman. And now he has three to think about. Good job by Chris Street with a head fake. Michigan wanted the principal verticality put into play where Riley thought he had his hands straight up. Thought maybe Chris Street initiated the contact. Not so, said the officials. McIver has replaced Riley. A street who has not scored goes to the line. 
Chris Street is a player who can contribute a lot of ways even when he's not scoring. Oh, seven. His ability on the ball, he has good feet, long arms, able to deflect or bother the vision of the inbound passer. And he will gain confidence at the offensive end. He will get better and better. Hawks lead by three, their biggest lead of the game on Chris Street's two free throws. 53-50 high, well, 14 and a half left to play. From like their opponent's fans when they would sit in their normal bench position. Wolverines playing from behind for the first time in the game as they trail it by three. In essence, three guards in the lineup now in tally along with Caleb and Polinka. Iowa starting out hot. This half, just about uh, the opposite of the first half. They're seven for nine with good ball handling, good movement. Hawks shot only 40% in the first half on the year. They're hitting 51% from the floor. Shot clock down to 12. Polinka. Barnes with a rebound. Rodell Davis with that bad leg having a difficult time pushing off, getting out to Polinka. Winters tries to keep it alive, so does Street. And a foul's called on the Wolverines. Polinka got caught in the middle there between the two Hawkeyes are trying to keep it alive, and he got the foul. Strong board play when Rodell Davis goes up. Chris Street and James Winters immediately go to rebounding position, splitting the court in thirds. They're each on one side of the basket, having the opportunity to try and get an offensive board. Mitchell and Street scrap for the rebound. Street takes it right away from him and gets the ball to Barnes. What a play by Chris Street. And a foul spotted as well against the Wolverines. The Hawks go up by five. Look at this hustle by Street. I'll tell you, this team, Larry, has a particular just air about it, a confidence. Chris Street, great balance, one foot, bouncing the ball into Val Barnes. That's it. The team really tries to find the open player, very unselfish play. And of course, when you receive a pass next time down court, you want to give it back to your teammate. Tally on the foul, his second streak gets a big round of applause as he goes out. And look how the field goal shooting is turned around for the Hawks. And just during the last two minute run, Michigan is 0 for 5, still shooting 50% in the second half, but 0 for 5 in their last five times down court. Barnes, who got 17 Saturday night against Michigan State, has 13 points in this one. <laughs> Iowa with a 56-50 lead, 13-31 to play. The Hawkeyes have scored the last nine points in the game. Caleb has trouble with it, and coming up with it is Kevin Smith. Hawkeyes have the numbers. 19 points for Rodell Davis, and a 58-50 Iowa lead. And Kevin Smith is doing a very good job of keeping the ball away from Demetrius Caleb in the middle once Michigan inbounds the ball. Exactly 13 to play. The Wolverines, who have led three times by 10 points, now find themselves down by eight points. Coming off the pick is Tally. McIver on the offensive rebound, and jamming at home is Riley. Riley in double figures with 10. Hawkeye pressure able really to create. Once again, Rodell Davis getting a strip job, and then Kevin Smith look away pass and the dunk. Rodell Davis keeps on scoring right inside. Rodell Davis fighting off very severe knee problems and this year so much more athletic. Finally, last year got to play but really didn't get in the shape he needed to be, but now he's taken off some weight. He's really become a factor, especially tonight on a season high and a point away from a career high with 19. Val Barnes wants the ball low. Val Barnes likes to post up. He's got Kurt Taylor on him inside getting late. It's getting to be Val Barnes' time of the game. The other night, he got 15 points in the last six minutes. That's when Val wants it. Kevin Smith. That was strictly one on two. Kevin Smith took the challenge by the defensive Wolverines. Almost gets the strip. And then he gets a foul. Caleb with the foul. 
So Smith does get the steal. Keela picked up his second foul. The Hawks lead by eight. Watch his defense by the very quick Kevin Smith. What tremendous defense. Lightning quick feet and hands. Caleb gets that ball hung up on his backside as Smith forced him to turn. Great defense by Kevin Smith. And a timeout is called. 11.56 to go. The Hawks now leading by eight. We'll be back after these words from your local state. Conference Incorporated is prohibited. See if I was set up a specific play during that timeout. Drives. McIver tries to rebound, but Street takes it away from him. And Kurt Taylor in perfect position to pull down the rebound for the Wolverines. Hawks trail by three at the half, now lead by eight. McIver, the talented freshman from Texas. But you may have noticed he wanted to go power to A.C. Earl. He faded away to 10 feet before he shot that line drive. And a blocking foul called on Michigan. Steve Fisher didn't see it that way. Well, Steve Fisher says, wait a second. Down along the baseline. All of a sudden, Bosco's moving. I don't think there's any question about that call. Michigan now with 16 fouls. The Hawks with just one. Pro trying to use the glass, and with the rebound is McIver. And Smith is right there to pick it off. Oh, what a pass to A.C. Earl. And Michigan had all kinds of numbers. There were four Iowa players down there trying to defend against McIver. Once the ball got loose, it was four on one, and Smith came up with it. Iowa's opened their biggest lead. It has really been the man-to-man -man defense. Pressure going out, bothering the Michigan perimeter game, forcing the ball to go inside where they have not been effective. They are not good passers or scorers. Making only one foul against the Hawks, all the more impressive. Well, now two. <laughs> as A.C. commits the foul. Well, you see four Iowa players around the ball. Opportunity to bring it down court four on one. And McIver throws it at the feet of Taylor. Hawkeyes go back and score the other end. Tom Davis has made a couple of changes. Street and Winters check out the lineup. Troy Skinner is back in. James Moses almost with the deflect. Here's McIver wheeling around A.C. Earl, and A.C. pushed him, and A.C. has now got his third. Third foul on Earl, third foul on the Hawks in the second half. What A.C. does, and what a lot of good shot blockers do, is let the ball be shown going up to the basket and then reach from behind. With three, Earl will leave in favor of Winters. Jump down pass inside. That's what Iowa wants. Let the big people handle the ball. Good move. And then AC tries to come from behind to strip that ball and gets called for that third. McIver, the 4A player of the year in Texas last year out of Freeport, Texas. A lot of Texans heading up in the Big Ten. McIver to Michigan. And of course, Kevin Smith, Phil Chime to Iowa. Reputation of the conference has a lot to do with that. Well, right, and Jimmy King from Plano, Texas, an outstanding guard, is also one of Michigan's recruits for next year. Hawkeyes with the ball and a chance to go to a double-figure lead for the first time in the game. Barnes getting to the baseline, but traveling to do so, and the turnover gives it back to the Wolverines. 10-11 to go. Iowa with a 62-54 lead over Michigan. Caleb comes back in as Bosco will leave for the Wolverines. And the turnover gives it back to Iowa with 10.05 to play. Panic just set in there. Absolutely no opportunity for the Wolverines to get the ball. 24 turnovers against the Wolverines, a nightmare for Steve Fisher, but he talked about that pressure today, and all coaches do. Everybody worries about it. Not easy to solve. Especially with a young team. Caleb is really the only player that's had quality playing time in critical games. Travel on winners, and the ball goes back to Michigan. 
We showed that turnover stat, and of course it's in favor of the Hawks, but still way too many turnovers for Tom Davis' liking. Uh, James Winters is really just going to have to work on that foot movement, but when you catch the ball, you've got to keep one foot still and start to make your move or pivot with the other. The Iowa lead is 8, 9.40 left to play. Last two times the teams have played on this floor, it has gone into overtime. Underneath, McIver. For Michigan, number 44. His second basket. And it's a six-point Hawkeye lead at 62-56. As we expected, rather high scoring. Not like that Wisconsin-Michigan State game, only 47 points in the first half between the two teams. Troy Skinner had that ball protected, and Tally didn't respect that and tried to take it away. Tally with his third foul. He becomes the second Wolverine with three fouls. Another starter is in foul difficulty with three, Eric Riley. But the Wolverines now with 17 fouls to the Hawkeyes three at 9.29 to play. And Mackey talked earlier about when the Hawkeyes get to the foul line, they are generally successful. Well, they are 12-0 when they've been to the line more than 20 times in any one game. And the only two losses they've had, they only got there 20 or fewer times. Winters, an offensive rebound. And Skinner missing two tonight. That'll make USA Today news, huh? He won't miss two in another month, will he? The way he normally shoots them. Leads the Big Ten in free throw shooting. Hawks doing a better job getting offensive rebounds in this one. The double dribble against Webb gives it back to the Wolverines. Good flash defense by Taylor. Started to go with his man and then stepped back into the passing lane. Jay Webb anticipated there would be a lane there. And he got caught with a good defensive work by Taylor. Street in, Webb out, 9-10 left. Almost a poke away by Davis. Michigan needing a win for their first conference win. They're 0-2 in league play. Winters getting caught on the shove. And Winters holding hands in there with Eric Riley. And Tom Rucker said, that's a no-no. His second foul, team's four. McIver inbounding. Street with the defense gets the five. Uh, once again, I am just so impressed with Chris Street on the ball, bothering the vision of the inbounds. You see Chris keeping his hands following the ball. It's called tracing the ball. Wherever the ball goes, you take your hands and you bother the vision of the man throwing it in at the same time. Freshman against freshman, and Street won that duel. Hawks try to build on a six-point lead. We are under the nine-minute mark. And there's a foul, Tom Davis. Talking to the officials as they flash the foul. Kind of a weak whistle there by the official. He started to call it stop and then started again. Got the foul called that time on McIver. McIver becomes the third Wolverine with three fouls, and now he will leave and back into the lineup carrying three fouls. Or excuse me, that will be uh, Sam Mitchell coming in. Mitchell averaging 6.9. A probable starter did not start and has seen very limited playing time as he did against Ohio State on Saturday. I'll tell you, Sam was recruited by the University of Iowa out of high school. A.C. Earl struggling at the line tonight. Struggling's a big word right here. Well, he's three for ten from the field. But he'll get another opportunity. It's the second time when A.C. has been at the line. The Wolverines have been in the lane too soon. Steve Fisher said no, he wasn't. <laughs> Last time he got a second chance, he connected. Does the same here. Early 11 points, five block shots. And five rebounds. Twelve for Earl, and the Hawks once again are up by eight, 64-56. The lone returning starter from Michigan, Caleb, bringing it ahead. Wolverines a 23-8 and team last year. And Mitchell draws a foul as he got the ball in deep. 
And that may be A.C. Earl's fourth foul. It is. A.C. Earl, foul number four. 8.32 left in the game. So now the Wolverines will try to take some advantage of it. Hawks is a team with five, but the big concern for Iowa is that man. Winters will replace him, and now we'll have to play somewhat of an extended period of time. AC has not had a great offensive night, but again, five blocks, five rebounds, and is very effective in there defensively because the people do not want to penetrate and face his shot blocking ability. You know the shots are going to come from outside. Now Michigan may challenge, drive, and penetrate. That was the first free throw that the Wolverines have hit in this half. As into the lineup for the first time, Freddie Hunter, for the first time in his Michigan career. The transfer out of the University of Detroit who just walked on to Michigan. Steve Fisher said, let me throw him into a game sometime. Tonight's the first night he's eligible, and right now he comes into the lineup. Like he said in September, he didn't know who Freddie Hunter was. And the Hawks hope he doesn't find out tonight. 8.25 left, and the turnover gives the Wolverines the ball. And kind of an unsettling crowd now. They feel with AC in that fourth foul situation. It does give Iowa a different look. See how long Tom Davis will leave him out. That fourth foul occurred at the 8.32 mark. Wolverines led throughout the first half. They've trailed most of the second half. And Iowa to compensate for AC Earl goes zone. And over the zone, Taylor knocks home a three. Wolverines to within four. With the steal, Kirk Taylor. But he is guilty of turning it over, and the ball will go back to the Hawkeyes. Taylor's not sure what he did. Taylor had the ball at midcourt. He had stepped across midcourt and tossed the ball to the point guard, Tally. And a timeout as the Hawkeyes try to hold on. It's Iowa 64, Michigan 60. We'll be here. AC Earl, he's got four. And of course, he is such a factor at both ends of the floor. It makes his time on the bench critical, but now he's not on the bench. AC comes back in with four fouls. Tries to save it, but can't. And Michigan gets it. Tom Rucker explaining to AC exactly why he made the call that he did. And it will be Sam Mitchell inbound for the Wolverines. A game that has seesawed back and forth with a lot of momentum changes. Big rebound by Hunter. Smart play by Hunter. Maybe a newcomer, but he showed some cool there. Yeah. Caleb gets Smith into the air and can't finish it off, and Skinner has the rebound for Iowa. Skinner takes the point this time. Smith goes to the wing position. Where he's being chased by Talley. Smith in deep beauty. Now you see me, now you don't. Eight for Smith, six point lead for the Hawks at 66 to 60. Iowa still zone, trying to identify the perimeter, trying to match up. Smith on Caleb, then Rodell will go back to Tally. Skinner's got to be aware of Taylor. Wolverine perimeter shooting not nearly as impressive in the second half. Shot clock down to 15 as Caleb fires a three. Five three-pointers for Caleb, 19 points, and it's a three-point Hawkeye lead. At the other end, Skinner. Misfiring, and Caleb comes up with a rebound. Big trip up the floor for the Wolverines. Taylor for three, and Smith with a rebound. Davis matched with Pally. Help the basket, and a foul is called on Michigan. Real confidence going off, pivoting on that bad knee. A good outlet pass by Smith, and then Rodell Davis Continuing to have an outstanding game. Tally, just physically not a match. Tries to chest him up. It's called for the block. The basket's good. And for Tally, his fourth foul. 
And for Rodell Davis, a new career high, 21 points. Palenka now into the lineup for Michigan. And they'll take the place of Taylor. Well, Davis goes to the line. Some interesting events coming out of the NCAA convention that may change the complexion of college basketball a bit. Well, certainly, Larry, scholarships in basketball are going to be cut from 15 to 13. And I'd have to say that's probably not a good situation if they ever intended to have freshmen ineligible. Uh, there's no way possible with 13 scholarship players can freshmen be ineligible. You're forcing freshmen to play. Certainly, that's not a strong situation to have better academics. The possible it could make recruiting any more pressurized than it already is with less scholarships to give. Well, and I think it, the parity will take place because now you have two players that normally would have gone to some school looking elsewhere, and it will equalize the actual talent. But I just don't see any way it really helped scholastics at the college level. So far, Constantine has been the real thing, don't you think? Yeah, not reform. It's just cost saving. Caleb gets the roll and pulls the Wolverines to within three. 21 points for Demetrius Caleb, the senior out of Flint having an outstanding game. Because he played well against Iowa last year, getting 22 points in the game at Michigan, which at the time was his career high. And Rodell Davis is fouled. You could almost say that shot was made by Hunter. As Rodell went up, the ball was slapped away. And it almost went in. It's the 10th team foul on the Wolverines as Palenka with his third will go to the bench. And so now, no longer will Iowa shoot the one and one. It's an automatic two shots on every foul. Davis, 21 points, previous best 20 against Indiana last year. And the team doing a great job at the free throw line, especially in the second half. Hawks doing a better job at the line, though. They did five out of seven. On the other hand, the Wolverines in this half just one out of five from the line. <laughs> 22 for Davis, and the Iowa lead is four at 69 to 65. James Moses comes in, and Rodell Davis goes out. Caleb has really been an outstanding perimeter player for Michigan tonight, not getting a lot of help at this particular juncture. And he's showing real poise. He's showing some confidence as a senior. Earl goes for a sixth block, but instead a foul is spotted. Michigan wants goaltending. Street with the foul. Cut down the middle. Street just coming over, trying to bother the shot. And he bodied him a little bit. Kirk Taylor, eight points tonight, 0-1 from the line. Well, the Michigan State uh, Spartans got it going in the second half, got 65 points. Wisconsin, just 50. Boy, they must have played very strong defense in that second 20 minutes. 10 for Taylor. Wolverines to within two. Iowa leading at 69-67. And A.C. Earl has shown this before. He can dribble that basketball, but not so well this time, because Talley picks his pocket. Kevin Smith takes it right back. Earl alone on the pass from Moses. Good ball movement. The court was spread. Smith went to the perimeter to allow A.C. Earl to trail and get himself wide open. A four-point Iowa lead with just over four minutes to go. Hunter, his first Wolverine basket. Iowa wanted travel on that move in the middle. Of course, A.C. Earl with four fouls lost his aggressiveness to challenge. Hunter on the shot. Street checks out as Webb, who will inbound, comes in. Exactly four to go, 71-69. Iowa with a lead of two. Shifting pressure. And with <laughs> 10 seconds right. almost elapsing, he gets the ball to Barnes. And that was right at 10 seconds as the ball was in the air. 
which is the right call. Now the Hawks spread it out a little bit offensively. Moses had it knocked away from behind. Recovering, though, is Smith. Wouldn't have counted anyway. He had stepped out of bounds. The ball goes over to Michigan. They have a chance to tie it with a two and take the lead with a three. First at timeout. 3.33 left in a nail-biter. We'll be back after these words from your local town. And Michigan down by two with the basketball. Boskell number 32 coming in at the timeout for the Wolverines. See if the Wolverines do try and go for three. I will never find out. Not this time. Davis with his second foul. So the Wolverines have a chance to catch the Hawks at the free throw line. Hawks with their seventh team foul, which means that Caleb will shoot the one and one. He's a 72% free throw shooter who has not been to the line tonight. He is 8 of 19 from the field. Caleb's 22, leading Michigan in scoring. Tom Davis, 3 and 5 career against Michigan. Tie ball game. And of course, they've had some high scoring games two years ago, the double overtime. Iowa wins by one. Skinner now replaces Smith. Hunter just came in over 31 for Michigan. Hawkeyes try to regain the lead in this game that's tied up at 71. And AC Euro with four fouls is on the floor. Every possession a big one now for both teams. Hawkeyes have had a tough time getting it to AC Earl. That time they got it in an easy basket because of the double team. Nice dump off by AC to J. Webb, and Iowa leads it 73 71. <laughs> Taylor lobbing for Riley. Riley has a dozen. Game tied up again, even at 73. 2.37 left. Barnes trying to race around Caleb. Well, Larry, we've seen it a couple times this year. The Iowa State game, Michigan State game. Last three minutes, Barnes wants that basketball. He really does. Caleb on his third foul. Barnes to shoot two with 2.30 to go. Game even at 73. Davis and Skinner. And of course, some people want to ask why maybe take Kevin Smith out late in the game. You want a good foul shooter in there. Of course, Troy Skinner, one of the best in the country, proven. And Kevin Smith, that's part of his game he has got to work on. Barnes gives Iowa the lead. It's a one-point lead as Taylor gets the rebound. Wolverines come up the floor, down by 174-73. Michigan certainly playing their best game of the Big Ten season. They lost their first two to Michigan State and Ohio State. They've really come in and challenged the Hawkeyes at Carver Hawkeye tonight. Michigan goes away from the corner, and then they run a man to that open area and creates problems for the Iowa zone. Watch to bring a baseline man over. That time Riley got the ball and the basket. And Michigan got the lead back at 75-74. 1.45 left in the game. Hawkeyes 9-0 on their home floor this year, but being challenged by Michigan right down to the wire. Barnes on the penetration, Barnes on the basket. Iowa back into the lead, 76-75, 128 to go. I'll tell you, Eric Riley just about ripped Troy Skinner's head off. And the tie ball, the possession arrow. Well, give it to the Hawkeyes. And it was Val Barnes again. A little ball fake. And Val looks like he has hit 
and hurt his right hand as Looks Steve like Fisher calling timeout. May have jammed a finger. So Michigan uses the timeout. 121 left. Hawks lead by one. Will return to Carver Hawkeye Arena in just so about a minute or 55 seconds. They would get a two for one offensive opportunity. So the Hawks now pull it out. We get down to the minute 15 mark. Smith, Moses, Earl, Skinner, and Street in the lineup for the Hawks. Kevin Smith plays with such great confidence down the stretch. He's got to be careful that he doesn't get a five-second call. With the shot clock at 22, he scores! He shoots that ball on the way out. The foul. Taylor, obviously the choice. Well, Bosco, if he's in the lineup, he hasn't been to the line much. At all. That's not much. <laughs> That's not much at all. The best he can do is give Iowa a four-point lead, but that would accomplish something because the Wolverines would then have to score twice. And then see if Iowa goes man-to-man -to, -man to really try and force that perimeter shot. McIver the rebound. Michigan down by three. Do they go for a three here? They have no choice, really. Taylor leaves it short. Rodell Davis, big rebound. Tally wanted the steal. He got it. It occurred right in front of the Iowa bench, and Tom Davis doesn't believe it. No, the officials are looking at that one. Michigan has the ball when play resumes. They trail by three. We'll be right back. on the perimeter shooters. Give up the two inside. Do not give up the three on the outside. The problem with that, though, with the new rule change of shooting three free throws, you can't go foul the man as they shoot that three-pointer. Definitely don't foul on the three try. What you're looking at is the game clock. Wolverines need three to tie. And A.C. Earl captures the rebound off the miss by Vossel. He is fouled by Riley. Riley with his fourth, but A.C. Earl, who had struggled earlier in the game and at one point missed three, three throws in a row, has hit his last three. He now goes to the line trying to put this one at least a wider margin, even not probably out of reach even if he hits them both. But at least he could make it a little bit of breathing room for Iowa. And Palenka talking to Coach Fisher. He'll be coming into the game as a perimeter shooter. And with instructions of probably when to call timeout and who they would want to foul. He's calling the team together. Palenka at the free throw line. Vossel coming out. I don't think he was the one they wanted to take a three. Do you? No. But time was running out. Iowa in the last three minutes, one for four from the free throw line in the last three minutes of this game. The Hawks lead is four. 79-75, and Iowa will use a timeout. A final, Illinois 67, Minnesota 66. So a comeback win for the Illini. And the Gophers now 0-2 in the league, and Iowa plays there on Saturday. It's the Big Ten game of the week. Michigan with the ball, trailing by four. 12 seconds left. Riley for three. Well, that's Earl a big rebound. And two for seven, the Hawkeyes, who have been very tough down the stretch in other games, just two for seven in this last three-minute stretch. Make it two for eight. And the crowd goes, ooh, free throw practice tomorrow. Bosco hits at the horn, but it will leave the Wolverines a point short. And the Iowa Hawkeyes go to two and one in league play with a 79-78 victory over Michigan. Outstanding play by the Hawkeyes after getting down at home, mentally getting back into the game, take care of, taking care of the basketball, doing it with pressure defense, turning the ball over. Wolverines giving up a lot of turnovers in this particular game. Iowa's defense went man-to-man -man the second half. Good job there. The Hawks, their 13th win of the year after 12 all of last year. Final score, Iowa 79 and Michigan 78.